Happy Saturday, Heat Nation! Your boy Ernest here, back with another Miami Heat Talk video. Before we get started, you guys, take a moment, smash the like button, don't forget to subscribe. Let's rock and roll on another Miami Heat Talk adventure. Now, I'm in a great mood for a few reasons. First and foremost, you guys, I woke up today. It's like I tell you guys all the time. Every day we wake up, it's already a great day. Take heed of that, y'all. Uh, but also because the Miami Heat did business last night, you guys. We finally broke this four-game losing streak slump. The Miami Heat defeated the Detroit Pistons 108-95. to So the Heat moved to a 36-30 and record. Now for, those of the, now for those Heat fans that were panicking, freaking out about being the eighth seed, it's time to relax. Because with last night's victory, the Miami Heat move up to the seventh seed. It's like I've said to y'all in the past. The race to the fourth seed is incredibly close. The Heat are only three games down from the fourth seed, six games down from the sixth seed. We still got 16 games left to go in the season. Anything can happen, y'all, and the Heat got a favorable matchup. We got, a, uh, back, we got another game against Detroit tomorrow, and then we got Philadelphia on Monday. If the Heat win both of those games, you can easily see a slide to the sixth seed, uh, to the sixth seed maybe even the fifth seed, depending how Orlando and New York do. Now, a few things from the game that uh, I want to talk to you guys about. First and foremost, I want to give player of the game to a certain player. Uh, you got to go ahead and uh, obviously Bam Adebayo was our best player last night. Gives you 20, 22 points, 9 rebounds, um, 2 steals, 3 block shots. Bam was filling up the stat sheets, being his all-star level self. Uh, but honestly, you guys, I really have to give player of the game to Caleb Martin. Caleb Martin in the second half of the season is showing that he's playoff ready. Caleb Martin is a guy that the Heat are going to depend on going into the playoffs. Is Nikola Jovic going to be the starting power forward in the playoffs? Or is Spo going to rely on Caleb Martin? The great thing is, he's going to have options. Last night, Caleb Martin comes off the bench, gives you 33 amazing minutes. He's a plus 14 out there. 18 points, 8 rebounds, 6 assists, 2 steals, 8 for 14 for the field. Caleb Martin wants that bag, y'all. We know that Caleb Martin is playing for a contract. And if Caleb Martin has another playoffs this year like he did last year, he's going to get that money. So we need Caleb Martin to help us this season. All right? And this is going to go to the next subject I want to talk about. Actually, no, no, no. Let, let, let's stay on the game, actually, before I get to that. Um, Jimmy Butler, y'all, I'm noticing that he hasn't really been in Hemi mode. But that's great. We need Jimmy prepared for the playoffs. Now, I don't want to say that his lackluster performance last night is something to panic about. I know he gives you 14 points, only shoots 11 shots, goes 5 for 11. Jimmy Butler dominated the, begin dominated the beginning of the game. He got the heat rolling, but then he relied on a lot of these other guys to help him out. We need Jimmy ready for the playoffs, y'all. This whole 40 minutes to win game, you know, we, like I, I understand that all hands are deck. We need to win some games, but we need to get, keep Jimmy fresh for the playoffs. All right. So we got to do what we can. If it's a game like this that you see that the Heat are taking control, don't have Jimmy Butler play. I love that he played only 31 minutes last night. Now, I'll be honest with y'all. This game was a little bit concerning because the first half of the game, Pistons kept this relatively close. Then the Heat outscored the Pistons 28 to 18 in the third quarter and then never looked back. So this is a game that you needed to win by double digits to show the NBA, to show the league, to show the people that you are a top tier team. Now what sucks about this Heat team during the season, against the best teams, you're losing. But against the lower level teams, you're winning. Last season, the Heat were losing to a lot of these lower level teams, but they were beating really good teams. Um, so I don't know if this is a cause for concern. It's like I said to y'all before, the Heat are a playoff team. In a seven-game series, nobody wants this smoke. I really doubt that a team can look at a Miami Heat in a seven-game series and go, we got this. Now, who knows? This may not be the year. But every year, you guys, I'm confident with this Miami Heat roster because we got Jimmy Butler, we got Coach Spo, and we got Bam Adebayo. But we also got some dogs because last night you get 16 points from Duncan Robinson, 18 points from Terry Rozier, 7 points from Nikola Jovic, only 15 minutes. You get 11 points from Thomas Bryant. Jaime Jaquez has not been playing the way that he was playing earlier this season. 26 minutes, he only gives you 2 points, 5 rebounds. I call this rookie struggles. 
You know, this is what happens sometimes with rookies come March. Um, it's a long season. They're not used to it. Sometimes rookies excel. Sometimes they go through a little struggle. I think this is just a bad time. I think Jaime Hawkins is going to regroup. We're going to see a different animal come playoff time, Heat fans. So relax. Don't panic. Now, before I get to the, top, to the topic of the video, um, there was some concerning news. It looks like Tyler Hero and Kevin Love did not travel with this Heat team on the road trip. Um, you know, we got Philly. We got uh, Detroit. So they're not going to be on, on these games. Um, there's really no updates from what it sounds like. Tyler Hero is out. You know, Tyler Hero even said it the other day. He doesn't know when he's coming back. So that is a cause for concern. I'm hoping that the Heat are just holding Tyler Hero off towards the end of the season to gear him up for the playoffs. That's possibly the same thing with Kevin Love. Um, but I am confident that the Heat can get these victories against Detroit and Philly, especially since Philly doesn't have Joel Embiid right now. Um, I really feel that the Heat are, you know, can get this done. Uh, so it's a great thing to see y'all the Miami Heat are doing some business right now We just got to take it one game at a time. Don't worry about this four game losing streak Don't worry about the seven game losing streak earlier in this season. Those are just bad slums I feel that the Miami Heat are getting ready to turn this on y'all now before I get to the main topic at hand I want to address yesterday's uh, what video I posted a couple days ago talking about Mike Malone I didn't post anything yesterday you guys it was having a family day and then I started noticing that a lot I was getting a lot of feedback on that video made mainly from the Denver Nuggets fans just blasting me off <laughs> just blasting me in the comments now before I respond to everyone and give y'all my little input uh first and foremost to those Denver Nuggets fans that were blasting my comments I hope y'all subscribed click that subscribe button before you started bashing my channel because man like that was something. So I hope y'all are subscribed, Nuggets fans. But I will say this to y'all. I respect the Denver Nuggets. I respect Coach Mike Malone. I think what Mike Malone has done for the Denver Nuggets has been amazing. He's turned them into a juggernaut. The Denver Nuggets organization has put the right players around. Nikola Jovic and Jamal Murray. Guys like Michael Porter Jr. Guys like Reggie Jackson. Guys like Aaron Gordon. Guys like KCP. KCP was a huge addition to that team. So this is a great Denver Nuggets team. What I mentioned in the previous video was that I wanted Miami Heat fans to take Mike Malone's words, especially for the negativity we've been seeing, and just flip it around. Guys, this is Miami Heat talk. This ain't Denver Nuggets talk. This ain't Boston Celtics talk. This is Miami Heat talk. But if you notice a lot of Miami Heat channels when the Heat are slumping, they kind of get to the negativity as well. I'm the voice of the voiceless for the positivity for Miami Heat fans. This Miami Heat Talk channel promotes positivity, okay? I always see the light, even in the darkness with this Miami Heat roster. And the numbers prove it, y'all. 2020 NBA Finals trip. I don't count 2021 because that was an off year because the season started two months after the NBA Finals. And the Heat had to play a 72 game season. So I don't really count 2021, but yeah, we got swept by Milwaukee in the first round. Fine, they were more well rested. 2022, you go to the Eastern Conference Finals. Last year, 2023, you have a Cinderella story as an eighth seed and make the NBA Finals. So I am very confident in this roster. Now I'll tell y'all, if, if this was back in 2018, when we had Hassan Whiteside, James Johnson, Deion Waiters, uh, Josh Richardson, Justice Winslow. If you asked me then, do I feel that he can win the championship against that juggernaut in Golden State Warriors? Hell no. I would not be on this channel saying that he could win a championship. I, I would have said that he could have competed in the playoffs. They didn't, but they could have because they were a scrappy team. But I knew that team wasn't going to win a finals. So for those people that are on my comments calling me delusional, saying that I'm biased, saying that I'm an idiot, and all of these negative words that you're using, go ahead. Because all that does, y'all, is it adds fuel to the fire. Us Heat fans, we're used to hate. We're used to people looking down on us. We're, we're used to ESPN and social media not mentioning us, but then jumping on the bandwagon when we're doing good. We're used to people hating us 
because of the fact that we've won three NBA championships in a 35-year span when a lot of teams haven't even sniffed a championship in a 35-year span. So I understand that the Miami Heat is always ridiculed and is always hated on. So all I'm going to say to that is, bring the smoke, baby. I want all the smoke. And thank you guys so much for commenting and helping me with that. Appreciate y'all. Now to the topic at hand, y'all. I want to ask you guys, how many people feel that Miami Heat's owner, Mickey Arison, is holding this Miami Heat team back? Why am I asking that? Because in a lot of the comments that I've been, excuse me, a lot of the videos that I've been posting lately, I've been seeing a lot of comments from people saying that Mickey Arison's ruined this team. That Mickey Arison doesn't want to spend the money to build the team. That Mickey Arison does not want to put a championship team around Jimmy Butler. And I see this, you guys, and I want to talk about it. Because I understand that Mickey Arison and the Miami Heat are looking under certain tax bracket. Because right now we're a first apron team. So for all the people that say that the Miami Heat don't spend money on players, the fact that we have the seventh highest payroll in the NBA tells you that we do. It's just, have the Heat spent the money on the right players? That's the true question. Because this team that we've put together, Jimmy Butler, Bam Adebayo, Tyler Hero, those three main guys with the big salaries that they have, they haven't been fully healthy in the playoff run since 2020. Not even 2020, Bam got hurt in the finals. So we truly don't know what a healthy, Jimmy Butler, Tyler Hero, and Bam Adebayo-led Miami Heat team can actually do in a full playoff run. Call it bad luck. Call it the curse of LeBron James, like I always been saying in the past. Call it whatever you want. But we truly don't know what this Heat team can do. But back in 2022, you guys, when we were the first seeded team in the Eastern Conference, we had a quality starting power forward next to Bam, P.J. Tucker. He wasn't the seven-footer like we all wanted, but that dude did business on the defensive end. Miami, he left us for Philadelphia because he's a dumbass. I'm not going to get into that. If, yeah, but <laughs> he left us. And ever since then, Mickey Arison has not put the right power forward next to Bam. We've just had placeholders. Hopefully, Nikola Jovic is the answer. He's looking like it, but let's be honest, you guys. We know that there's better options out there. Thankfully, Kevin Love is holding it down as a backup center. And when he comes back, I feel a big man rotation of Love, Jovic, and Bam is going to be fine for the playoffs. But it could be better. Mickey could have done something better. Mickey could have go also could have gone all in on certain players. We know that Mickey Arison offered Tyler Hero for Kevin Durant a few years ago about in the 2022 offseason. We know that Mickey Arison and Pat, and Pat Riley were trying to go and get Damian Lillard this past offseason. Didn't work out. We say what you want. A lot of people felt like that Mickey Arison did not want to push in his chips. We know we've talked about that. A lot of Heat fans are happy that Mickey Arison didn't trade for Damian Lillard giving up all those assets. But there's certain Heat fans that think that Mickey Arison was just being cheap again. He's also he also didn't aggressively shop Tyler Hero in this trade deadline. Now, we know it's not, it's not Mickey Arison that's doing this. We know it's Pat Riley, but Mickey does sign off on everything. A lot of fans feel like that Mickey Arison shouldn't care. I've seen uh, certain Miami Heat channels that question his spending, that's saying you own Carnival Cruise Lines. You have all this money. You shouldn't care about the second apron. You shouldn't care about stuff like that. Go get players and help this team win. That's, a, that's another question, you guys. That's something else. Now, do I personally feel that the Mickey Arison is holding Miami Heat back? No. Because I feel that if you have the seventh highest payroll in the NBA, you're willing to spend money. You made a trade for Terry Rozier. The Heat are trying. You guys got to also understand that the whole Damian Little fiasco was not 100% our fault. It takes two to tango. Portland was just not negotiating with Miami. We know that story. If you guys don't know, go back in previous videos. I've talked about all this. But we know that the Miami Heat were waiting for this Damian Little saga to end. And while they were waiting, a lot of players were getting picked up. That was a risk that we ran. We thought it was going to work out. It didn't. So now you got to deal with what you have. I don't think Mickey Arison is hampering this team. I think Mickey Arison is trying his best with what he has. I think Coach Bo is trying his best with what he has. This offseason, 
the Miami Heat truly need to figure out what we need to do. Is it trading Tyler Hero? Is it maybe getting lucky in the draft? Is it maybe getting lucky with the biannual or mid, mid-level exception we're going to have and get a player that could truly help? We need to see what this team can do in the 2024 playoffs. Because fully healthy, we really don't know what this team can be. So I want to hear from you guys. Do you truly feel that Mickey Arison is holding this Miami Heat team back? Do you think that Tyler Hero is going to come back by playoff time? And let me know what you think about the victory last night against the Pistons. Thank you so much for the love and support, you guys. Don't forget to smash the like button. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Would really mean a lot to me. Thank you so much for the time. And until next time, your boy Ernest out. That's enough said. Let's go here.